Um, as Father Rob just reminded me, there's no children's sermon this morning, but I actually am going to need some kids to give, give me a hand. But that means you're going to help me do something up here. You're not just going to sit. So are there any people who'd like to come and help me this morning? Come on up. Doesn't matter. Just come on up. It's okay. It's all right. Come on. It's okay. All right. One more. Now, first thing I want to say to you, and this is for everybody, if you adults remember when you're, you were their age, one of the most difficult parts of being a kid was when you were on the playground and you were going to play a game, and so you decided to choose up teams. Do you remember? Has this ever happened to you? And what happens is there are two people, two captains, as it were, and they're supposed to choose their teams. The toughest place in the world was to be, oh, please don't make me last. <laughs> let me be the person that they don't want. Let me not be the person they don't want. This gospel story is for people like that. Or another way to pick it. Let's see, I need your help. I need you to come and stand over here. Now here's what I want you all to do. I want you to form a circle. Can you form a circle with each other? All the way, just close in. It's okay, you like each other. <laughs> now, here's what Jesus is talking about in the story. Here's this group of people. They like each other. They're enjoying each other's company. They're having fun together. It's a good time. What's your name? Evelyn. This is Evelyn. Now, look at where Evelyn's standing. She's not over there. In fact, <laughs> Evelyn, Evelyn hasn't been invited. Now, the question that this gospel raises is, where is Jesus? If Jesus were, come up, were to come up here, where would he stand? <laughs> All right. Why do you think that's true? Um, because, he wants to be, oh. because of what? Because he wants to be with his people. He does. Is she one of his people too? Oh, yeah, he says. <laughs> you know? You see, if you remember the Bible stories, like, for example, when Jesus has, he's the good shepherd, and he tells the story of the shepherd who leaves the 99 to go find the one, right? And takes the one and says, you all should be including her too. Yay! Yay. <laughs> That's right. That's right. These stories are for people who know what it's like to be over here. Looking at them and somehow wishing that they would be included too. Thanks. You guys can go back and sit down. Now, here's what I want to talk about for a minute. I want to talk first of all about what it's like to be over there what it's like to be the one. And you were right, I heard several sort of murmurs from the congregation that, yeah, where's Jesus? He's, he's over here. And the reason that's important is because Jesus sees. If you're in this group over here, unless you're very tender-hearted, you don't notice who's not with you. You're just happy that you've been picked. You got included. I'm in. And if somebody else doesn't get picked, but if you're in, well, I'm sorry for them, but I'm picked. I'm in. Jesus, on the other hand, sees completely and utterly 
the one over here. Not just evil and whoever it is that is over here. But remember the prayer that we often pray at the beginning of each service. Almighty God, what? To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. God sees everything that's going on in this person's heart. He sees this person's fears. He sees this person's almost rejection of themselves. Because if you're out here, you know that there are reasons for that. And there are things about you that you don't like that put you over in this place that where you're alone. And so it, it's not just that you're physically by yourself over there. What's also true, there's this, a kind of inner heartbreak that you live with day in and day out because you're not getting picked and you're trying to find a way in. On the other hand, when you live in a culture, or especially a church, where there is this group and then there are people over there, you feel that in the room even if you're one of the ones that are being picked because you know that status matters in this group of people. And therefore, what are you doing? You can't actually be honest with this group of people about where you're struggling, where you need prayer. You know, more often than that, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm good. Because, you see, if you actually divulged what was going on in your heart, maybe you wouldn't get picked the next time that group decided to assemble. And so there is always about the people who were in this group, even though they're included, a certain level of, well, you always are putting your best foot forward. You want people to like you and you're included. And you're going to make sure that continues to be the case. And you will, in fact, do whatever this group thinks is important so that you can stay included, whether that might be financially, whether that might have to do with putting down the people who aren't there, and even though you know that's actually not very right of you, you'll join along in the joke just so that you won't get left out from the group the next time this happens. Office politics are incredibly guilty of that kind of divisiveness. Some of you are nodding your head. And actually, no place can be more vicious than the elementary school playground around the very, very same things, which is, in fact, where we learn those survival skills. We figured out at a very early age, what is it that keeps you in and what keeps you out? And I'm going to be darned if I'm left out anymore. And so what you do is you, in essence, become an actor. You become the person this group wants you to be. And you keep hidden, if at all possible, all parts of your behavior or your thinking that doesn't fit in with this group's norms. And when a church is like that, that's when the church is guilty of what many people outside the church call, oh, they're just a bunch of hypocrites in there. And that kind of inner hypocrisy has everything to do with the need to stay in this group and the fear of rejection, and I don't want to get kicked out because, God have mercy, this might be the only friends I have. So I'll do whatever it takes to stay in. And so even though we say, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known from you, no secrets are hid, there's a part of us that goes, oh, I hope nobody finds me out. Even as, that, even as that prayer is being offered. But if you think about how Jesus operates, and really the point of these, these stories, is that he is longing for there to be a group of people, his people, that don't operate with this kind of dynamic. And depending on the community, what constitutes what in or not can change fear from place to place. It can be circled around economics. It can be circled around race. It can be circled around by virtue of education or culture. Like I heard of a church not too long ago that chose not to hire a particular youth director and the excuse that was given, it was sheer racism. But what they actually said out loud was, well, you know, he wouldn't fit into our culture here. 
That's race. In other words, there are lots of ways that this can be defined. And we now live in a culture that is fast becoming, acceleratedly so, groups that only define themselves by the circle that they're in. It's not just a question of locale anymore. It's actually a question of, well, either you're all the way for this particular candidate, or you're just not true blue. And everything is spoken in extremes, to the point to where we actually pick and choose the political commentators that we watch on television, or that we listen to on the radio, or perhaps even our friends, only if they espouse the things that we already believe. And if you don't believe the way I do, that means, that means you're for that candidate over there. And how can you be for that candidate and call yourself a Christian? There's something profoundly sick about that. And especially when it infects a local church. Because if there is any place on the planet that should look like, what does it say in Revelation? What, the picture of the body of Christ in the book of Revelation is every tribe, tongue, people, language, and nation. That's about as inclusive as you can get. And particularly given the culture in which we live, where there are such deep and profound divisions, a part of, and in fact, I would say, probably one of the most important parts of our witness to the wider culture is that even though there are lots of divisions like that out there, we choose by the mercy of God to be a people who actually believes that before the cross of Jesus Christ, we are all alike. And that all of us are profoundly in need of the mercy and the forgiveness of God. And that's, in fact, what we have in common. You see, these stories only make sense if I realize, perhaps either to my relief or to my horror, that these stories are written for people who know what it's like to be over here. And that is, in fact, where Jesus is, right here. And that he is the one, even through these stories, that is putting his arm around the one that has been excluded and just like we did, walks this person over into this group and says, they too are mine. They too are mine. So that we are finding ways to literally enjoy each other's company. Not just, how are you? I'm fine. And getting to know one another and forming a life together that is based on what we have in common in Jesus, and that that becomes more important than politics, race, economics, you fill in the dividers that so in, have been so infected our culture. That's what Jesus is talking about. But, so if you're saying yes to Jesus, what you're saying is, if you're over here and you know it, Guess what? In the kingdom of God, you are not excluded. You come to Jesus and say yes to him. He puts his arm around you and he brings you in. And that before him, before the cross, you can, in fact, be absolutely transparent about everything that's going on in your life, even the stuff for which you feel the strongest amount of shame and guilt. I mean, he already knows anyway. And therefore, he is willing to receive you just as you are. With him, you do not need to pretend. You do not need to pretend. And his desire is to form a body of people that is crafting their relationships, their, their life together around those principles of acceptance and understanding and of care. And that those transcend because we have been, as we said at the beginning, there is only one baptism. So if you're baptized and you're baptized, you cannot say that you're not brothers. Or do what we do. Well, you know, they're really not my kind of Christian. 
That is a sin against the very body of Jesus himself who pulls us all into one body because we belong to him. And I want to say to you that the world is longing, longing to know about a congregation of people that has that kind of open door. If you want to belong to Jesus, you've come to the right place. It doesn't mean you don't find places of disagreement. But what it does mean is that when you talk about those places of disagreement, they're not deal breakers. Because we're all one body. And we're finding a way to wrestle in genuinely honest ways because the level of acceptance has already been extended. In other words, my affiliation with you is not going to be predicated on whether I'm for one candidate or another, or whether I believe this or I believe that. What we hold in common, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, is what holds us together, and everything else is up for grabs. Will you be that kind of church? Will you be that kind of people? Will you be that kind of salt and light in this community? There are plenty of places that, where churches are clubs. And what a club looks like is where everybody thinks, believes, and acts and looks exactly the same way. I know lots of clubs who call themselves churches. So do you. But that's not the body of Jesus. <laughs> the body of Jesus is every tribe, tongue, people, language, and nation. As well as within that framework, Republican, Democrat, independent, people who think this way about an issue and people who think that way about an issue. Young and old, poor and rich, middle class, economically and educationally diverse, and are finding ways to be healed and care for one another in the midst of all of the brokenness and the desire to stick with people who are just like us that is in fact in all of us. There's, it's, it, it is human nature to be in a club. It is supernatural to be in a church that isn't a club, but in fact looks like the body of Christ. These Many who are coming for confirmation this morning and reception, I hope and pray, are saying, I'm here to be in a church. And I want to help make this place more and more like a church every single moment. Because St. Cloud needs to see a body of people that looks like that. So come today to this table where we're all leveled in the same place, the foot of the cross where we, are all, where we all belong if we have said yes to Christ. To say, yes, I will with God's help to this almost impossible task of building a body of people that is not based on culture or politics, but only on the very blood of Jesus that is cleansing all of us from all sin. That's what these lessons are about. That's the shorthand of what he writes in the epistle when he says, let love be, what does he say? I want to make sure I get this right. Let, love, let mutual love continue. That's shorthand for everything I just said. That God might help us for the sake of a world that needs to hear the good news of what we know in Jesus, and that we might learn to be less critical, laugh more, and pray deeply as God is making us to an, into a new people in Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Lord, you know how much we'd rather be in a club where it feels safer pull us out of clubs and into churches where we can wrestle together. Give us eyes to see, Lord, the people that you see, especially the ones on the outside who are wondering whether or not they would be welcomed and would fit in. Give us the courage and grace to follow you 
to leave the 99 to find the one. And help us, O Lord, by your mercy to build a place where it's not about club and gossip and criticism, but instead it's about a church that is filled with love, generosity, deep forgiveness, and great mercy. Thank you that we all are yours and that you will never let us go. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen.